All right, Shalom to the elect of the nation of Israel, the elect of Yahweh Hashem Yahushai. Once again, it's another video, and it comes to you through the spirit and power of Yahweh Hashem Yahushai Hashem Akar Kodash. Okay, so you see this video on the screen. Uh, this was put up by the channel uh, GMS in his likeness. And the name of the video is Preaching in the Hood is Pointless because you always have these Israelite geniuses that make these statements to us like, Why don't you guys go and preach in the hood? Why don't you preach in the hood? Well, here's a testimony from a brother uh, that um, uh, once preached in the hood, right? And he's going to give his testimony. I'm going to play some of his uh, testimony in this video. And of course, I'm going to make a couple of comments on it. And then I want to show you an article that I have. Because uh, that shooting that happened to the IUIC member uh, was in the, one of the worst parts of Kansas City. Now, what inspired me to do this video was uh, last night we had the brothers from Kansas City. They did a sit down and I'm not sure of the brother's name, but he made a statement. He said, uh, you know, he was uh, reproving and rebuking the group IUIC, in particular those individuals that set up their camp in the worst place in Kansas City, the hood. <laughs> in particular a street by the name of Prospect Street then the brother goes now I'm quoting what the brother said he goes he said he said you guys picked the worst street to set up a camp Prospect Street we know to avoid that street you know something to that nature so what I did was Google Prospect Street is it a bad neighborhood in Kansas City and lo and behold this is what I found it says Kansas City neighborhood makes America's fifth most dangerous list. So I want to know what genius over there at the IUIC had the great idea to set up a camp in the most, <laughs> not following the instructions of the Bible, which the Bible instructs you to set up your camp in the chief place of concourse where not only just one genre of people uh, go by, but all different genres of people. That's where you're supposed to set up your camp. Because, case in point, if you go in the book of, uh, let's bring in the scripture. But Jake don't like to follow instruction. Jake is coming in the spirit of Esau. Remember Cain? Cain was given instruction on how to sacrifice and he went and did his own thing and, and the Heavenly Father didn't accept the sacrifice. And then Cain got mad. Then the Heavenly Father said, look, if you do well, shall you not be accepted? In other words, learn to follow instruction. So you got these certain Jakes, especially in this truth, coming in the spirit of Cain, man. Not following instruction. Like I said, one of the reasons why you want to go to a place where there's all different genres of people is to fulfill this scripture here. Isaiah 34 and 1. It says, Come ye ye nations. That's all different kinds of people. Not just one group of people, one genre of people in the hood. Okay? <laughs> Come ye ye nations to hear and hearken. To hear what? Hear you preach the gospel. That's why your best bet is to set up. And if you, you know, if the spirit of Yahweh Barshem Yahushai is dealing with you, Yahweh Barshem Yahushai will be with it. Okay, you, you'll be able to set up your camp and teach. And you're going to teach in the spirit. You're not going to make personal attacks. You're going to stay in the scriptures. That's where the power lies, in the scriptures. And you're going to learn discernment. You're going to be able to read spirits. You're going to know what to say 
and when to say it, how to say it. You're going to learn a lot of different things and pick up more and more experience. But you have to follow instruction. We're not here to reinvent the wheel. The instructions have already been laid down. You follow them. But what does this group do? They, they, you know, we got to go to the hood. We got to go and reach our people. They are not your people. They are a bunch of degenerates. The majority of them, in the, they, there's a reason why they're in the hood. Okay, there's a reason why they're in the hood. Now, am I saying all of them? No. Some brothers and sisters are, you know, victim of circumstances, right? In other words, they're under the curses. Part of being under the curses is you in the hood. But the majority of our people that are in the hood, guess what? They belong in the hood. Kind of reminds me of the joke that Richard Pryor said. You know, he, at first he was feeling sorry for, for the Jakes in penitentiary. He said, um, you know, our people are caught up in the penitentiary. And then all of a sudden he said, thank God for the penitentiaries. And then he gave an example of this one Jake. He said, brother, why did you kill everybody in the house? And then the nigga said, there was home. So what is the point I'm making? The point I'm making is, man, them Jakes in the hood, they belong in the hood, man. That's where they belong. We're talking about bottom of the barrel scum, okay? And that's where you want to go and set up your camp and teach the word of Yahweh Bashim Yahshai? <laughs> anyway, Isaiah 34 and 1. Come ye ye nations to hear and hearken ye people. Let the earth hear and all that is therein, the world and all things that come forth of it. <clears throat> so, a platform to do that would be where all different kinds of people congregate, not just one genre of people, as in our, our so called people, which the, in the hood they're not our people. The majority of them are a bunch of animals, all right, degenerates, scumbags. What else? The baser sort, okay? And you don't take, as a matter of fact, let's bring in another scripture. Was that Matthew or is it Mark 7 and 6? You don't take that which is holy and, and throw it to the dogs. You don't do that, okay? <laughs> it is right here, the book of Matthew 7 and 6. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs. This knowledge, this truth is holy, all right? You don't treat it. Uh, you don't devalue it by throwing it to to to, uh, to just anyone. Okay, when you first come in the truth, of course, you're a novice and you do that. You don't know any better. But as you progress in the truth and, and you, you learn to be more sophisticated in the truth, you pick your spots. You pick your battles. You say, man, I'm not going to waste my time teaching this. Obvious, this guy is... <laughs> he's not all there. It's obvious... He's not meat for repentance, like John the Baptist said. So I'm not going to waste my time with this guy. And that's what you would be doing in, in the ghetto, in the hood. You'd be wasting your time, man. And I'm going to play, forgive me, I'm going to play uh, the uh, brother his testimony. Okay, and then that's going to be the video. But let me read the scripture, Matthew 7 and 6. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before swine. And that's what you got in the in the hood. You got swine and dogs. The baser sort. The riffraff. The ragamuffin. <laughs> like, like, like we say in the islands. The ragamuffin. Okay, that's what you got in the hood. Alright, smarten up. And the next time Jake say to me, Why don't you go and teach in the hood? I'm going to say, Why don't you go teach in the hood? You go teach in the hood, man, okay, and leave me alone. <laughs> I'll teach where the Bible instructs me to teach, which is the Grand Concourse, pursuant to Proverbs, the first chapter. Matthew 7 and 6, Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before swine. That's what you got in the hood. Least they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you. And that's what happened with that IUIC member. Them guys, have, but that's the result of poor leadership and, and individuals re, trying to reinvent the wheel, doing their own thing. That's what you got going on at the IUIC. You got some megalomaniac 
leader doing his own thing, okay? And second of all, well, should be, first of all, what name were they teaching in? They were teaching in the name of Christ. They weren't teaching in the name of Yahweh Bar Shem Yahushai. The Bible tells you when you um, baptize in him, let me bring that scripture out. I'm gonna let the scripture do the talking. Baptizing them. Again, not following instruction. Not following instruction. That's the problem. Matthew, the 28th chapter. This is a commission that Yahweh Shai gave us. Yahweh Shai gave us, right? Matthew, the 28th chapter, beginning at the 18th verse. And Yahweh Shai came and spake unto them, saying, All power, who's the them? His disciples, okay? Which became apostles. The word apostle means sent away, right? Saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Yeah, Yahweh Shai is the man right now, <laughs> all right? Now, this is after Yahweh Shai was... Uh, uh, crucified and then risen from the grave okay this is right before he was about to go back to his father which he's there to this very day and we're patiently waiting for him to come back and press that reset button and everything that's wrong to set it right that's what we're patiently waiting for right so this is what Yahweh Shai said he said go ye therefore and he said that he said that to us okay go ye therefore and teach all nations again Teach how are you gonna do that if you're in the hood? You gotta be in a place where all different genres of people, like I said, all different nations are congregating. The marketplace. That's where you gotta go. And like they say, ply your wares. <laughs> all right. That's that's where you want to go. Okay, but again, you always have these Israelite geniuses trying to reinvent the wheel, not being like Cain, not following instruction. They, got, they simply got to do it. it. Look, this ain't Burger King, man. You can't have it your way. You do it the way Yahweh Bashim Yahshai tell you to do it. Okay? Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So when you teach, you're supposed to teach in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This is why we say Yahweh, that's the Father's name, Bahasham in the name, Yahweh Shai, that's the Son, Bahasham Raka Kwadash. And that's in the ancient Hebrew. Because when Yahweh said this, he said it in the ancient Hebrew. But again, dudes trying to re reinvent the wheel. Well, we don't know if we have the, if the real Hebrew, Ebonics. <laughs> children, like the scripture say, children in, in whom there is no faith. <clears throat> we know we have the correct Hebrew according to faith. This thing of ours is based upon faith. Our elders, King Masha, Elder High Priest Arya, Elder High Priest Yaikwab, Elder High Priest Shah, they taught us right concerning the Hebrew. I remember when I first heard the Hebrew coming in one west, I knew that I, I felt the power in it. And it really identified with my spirit. And to this very day, I know and believe that we have the true Hebrew, the correct Hebrew, especially dealing with the name of the Father, the Son. Okay? But again, dudes trying to reinvent the wheel for their own purposes, whatever that may be. Anyway, when you go out there and teach, you teach in the name of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakwadash. You don't teach in the name of Christ. This is what happens when you go in some other name. You're not following instruction. Okay? So it's my belief one of the reasons why that guy got popped. Well, look at what name they were teaching. They were teaching in the name of Christ. You ain't going to get no protection from Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. You're not following instruction. <laughs> anyway, let's get to the video, man. And then I'm going to read a little bit of this article, and that'll be the lesson. Hopefully, you're edified. So let's go. May be filled. And listen, <laughs> it's important for us to remember that this is a commandment of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. This is something that's imperative and it is a part of the ministry. You cannot be a keyboard warrior, man. If you're on the keyboards posting precepts and making videos, you should have enough gumption, okay, and nutsack to take your ass on the highways or byways. And it's frustrating to see people on the keyboards posting precepts with and 
never on the highways or byways teaching. That's what this is. This is a commandment, man. This is ordained for us to do. This is the separation, okay, between who serves the most high with a sincere heart and who doesn't. All right? That's right, bro. Hey, same beautiful brother, Bayan Yasha'Allah, Matthew chapter 3 and 8. Hey, man, the water. Bring forth fruit, therefore, Salakia. Bring forth, therefore, fruits, meat for repentance. And you're not going to get that preaching in the hood. I'm sorry, man. Jake is in the hood in the worst conditions ever. You got the police just strolling for no reason because they know it's about to go down. Okay, everybody's got a gun. Everybody's got drugs. You got domestic violence. <clears throat> you got... Now, this is a man that actually used to preach in the hood. Okay? So for those of you guys, well, you know, did he ever preach in the hood? Watch the video. At the beginning of the video, he talks about how he... He actually preached in the hood. Okay? Gunshots being rang out for no reason. Okay? Because Jake likes that kind of... That's so true. When I used to live in um, Flatbush, Brooklyn, almost every night I used to hear gunshots, man. Some simple-minded, stupid nigga firing off his gun for no reason. He's nigga... Man, you you want to be around that element? <laughs> <laughs> you want to go and preach in the hood? Give not that which is holy unto the dogs. Lifestyle. Jake likes that kind of profile. And it's two thirds of our people. It's not even the, the one third. The one third desires to get out of the hood. Don't Many of our people, man, they love, they're just inst institutionalized. They make songs about D block. You know, which is in jail. You know, in jail, that's like a. Um, I got to do more research on it, but I believe that's where they send the real bad riffraff. They send them to D block. And our people glamorize. Our people, which I can't even call them our people. These Jakes out here, they glamorize death. They glamorize death. And that's what you get in the hood. Nothing but death. As a matter of fact, when I do the. Um, on these trails when I um, some of the trails that I bike because now I'm into bi riding my bike some of these trails like in particular New Haven all right there's a section of the trail that's in the hood man you feel the spirit when you are riding through there you feel it man and I put a different face on <laughs> when I'm riding through there than I do when I ride on the other part of the trail which is mostly in Esau's neighborhood you feel the spirit when you're riding through the hood. All right? You, f you feel very uneasy. Okay? <laughs> and you want to go preach the word of the Lord in the hood? Let's move on, man. One third desires repentance and change in their life and resents a lifestyle of death because that's what this lifestyle preaching in the hood brings. Preaching. Yeah, they glamorize death. It's a lifestyle of death in the hood. And it's a curse. That's why some of these Jakes that have sense, the first thing they want to do when they make some money is get the fuck out the hood. And then you have these other guys, why don't you come back to the hood? You come back to the hood to, to do what? To get shot? To get killed by one of you lowlifes? Oh, hell no. I'm staying the hell away from you. <laughs> Oh my goodness. In the hood is not a thing that is beneficial to someone who is actually trying to fish for the elect. Exactly. And I'm just speaking from experience. Yeah, who the hell now, how should I told Peter I'll make you fishes of men? Who the hell would go and fish in a muddy pond? Would you go and fish in a muddy pond? A cesspool? No, you're going to fish in where it's clear water, man. <laughs> <laughs> Again, who the hell would go and fish in a muddy pool? Not someone with some sense. Someone with some sense would go and fish in a clear water, vibrant water. That way the fish you, you, you may get, right, you know that's going to be a fish that you can actually eat. <laughs> 
Oh, man. Okay? I spent years preaching in the hood because that's yeah. where you, you know, that's where you can find Jake the most. You know? <clears throat> I was on a major highway um, and MLK at the same time. They intersected each other. And the thing about MLK, now, this is re what's real funny. Now, Martin Luther King is supposed to represent nonviolence, right? But your most violent neighborhoods, listen good, your most violent neighborhoods in the different ghettos across America is really located around the MLK Boulevard. Every major city in America has an MLK Boulevard. And that's usually where you find the worst kind, the worst kind inside joke. All right? The bottom of the barrel scum. The low lifes, the base of sort. That's where you usually find them, around Martin Luther King Boulevard, with the cross street, Malcolm X Boulevard <laughs> being the cross street. That's where you usually find them. And that was done by design, man. That's what Esau thinks of Martin Luther King, who was nothing but a, an ass liquor for the top banking elite. There's a picture of Martin Luther King with, uh, I think it was. Jacob Rothschild, one of the Rothschilds. So he was juiced in. All right. He was a hired monkey for the top wicked elite to push that civil rights nonsense. And you notice the civil rights BS is uh, lined up with the uh, LGBTQ, uh, QRS, TUV, WXYZ movement. You notice that shit. Okay, civil rights and that and the so-called happy people movement, that's totally, that's linked together. That was done by, co that was not done, by, that was done, that was not done by coincidence. That was planned. Okay. Like the scripture said, our people seen many things, but thou observest not. Who is blind but my servant Jacob, seeing many things, but thou observest not. Quoting the scripture. That's why we're only dealing with the elect. Like John the Baptist said, bring fruits, meat for repentance. And there was a, sh it was a, uh, it was a abandoned firehouse right by a gas station. And you would be surprised, man, how much <laughs> Jake, listen, I would do a lesson before I go to work. Jake would still have enough energy while he's going to his job to tell me, shut that shit up, man. Literally scream it out the window on camera. Yo, shut that shit up. Nobody want to hear that. But while he's going to go get oppressed from his oppressor. And that's the kind of environment you put yourself in, man. Don't put yourself in a predicament where you're around people who want to hurt you for telling the truth. I saw, uh, I saw this brother who left GMS to do his own thing. And I thought he was still a part of gms so i followed him right but come to find out that he just left gms to do his own thing right so while he's doing his own thing you know at the end of the day like he was preaching in the hood and man he had to cut the camera off because these dudes was about to kill him he started talking to this lesbian woman and then he was telling he was talking shit to her Telling her to repent and, and and talking about her being a lesbian and man, these two dudes came on camera and was about to kill this Jake. I ain't gonna lie, man. I I, I he <laughs> I thought he was through. They was about to put hands on him. They was all in the camera. They was telling him to get the fuck out of here. They was telling him he did better not see him again. Okay, and he had to cut the camera, get the hell up out of there, and then he cut the camera back on in the car like. <laughs> like that's what preaching in the hood that's the results of it there you go man all right speaking from experience so before i go the guy these guys from the iuic they picked the most dangerous hood <laughs> to set up their camp again this is a kansas city neighborhood makes america's fifth most dangerous list Let's read, let's read this. It says, although Kansas City did not gain the top spot, it did earn an impressive fourth place 
in a feature title the these are the five of the most these are five of the most dangerous neighborhoods in America on herbo.com a sophisticated urban lifestyle journal although other Kansas City neighborhoods might question herbo's selection as most dangerous locally the neighborhood chosen to represent Kansas City is the area around the intersection of Independence and Prospect Avenue. Now, according to the brother from Kansas City, he said that the place where the IUIC member got shot was near Prospect Avenue. Or I believe it was on Prospect Avenue. That's what he said. And then he started laughing. He said, you guys picked up. Well, that just shows you they weren't in the spirit. He was talking about IUIC. And they teach in the name of Christ anyway. So you know they ain't in the spirit. Psalms 127. Except the Lord build a house, they labor in vain that build it. If Yahweh Shemiah is going to build a house, a true house, the true house of truth, Yahweh is going to put his name and his son's name on that house. So right off the bat, I know using discernment, which many Jakes don't do, I know that Yahweh Shemiah is not dealing with that group. The fact that his name is not placed there, neither his son's name placed there. That's how I know. Now, what's going to happen concerning that group, IUIC, the Lord is going to extract his elect from that group, and that house is going to implode. It's going to go nowhere. Because this is a house built on sand. What did Yahweh Shai say about a house built on sand? When the rains come and the winds blow, that house is going to fall, and great was the fall of it. You got to build your house on rock. Our house, Great Millstone, get it? Great Millstone, our house is built on rock. The rock of Yahweh Shai. And I always say this, Yahweh Shai is the first great millstone. He's great and he's a millstone. And the scriptures back this up. Okay? So that being said, on to the next one.